All right, today we're going to be converting a picture of Elizabeth Taylor in glorious black and white into glorious color, and this is how it's done. Uh, first of all, if you choose a color for her face, like this, and then notice on the paint chips over here on the left that there's still grayscale, uh, gray or white or black. Uh, that means the black and white photograph you're looking at is in grayscale mode. Go to the image menu and change the mode from grayscale to RGB color, which is the color space we usually use when we're, uh, when we're doing um, adjustments in Photoshop. In fact, that's probably the mode we use most often in Photoshop. I'll choose RGB color here, and now the paint chips down below will be showing the colors that we've chosen. I've chosen a, a face color, basically, to start with, because that's the largest area of color that's going to be in this, except for perhaps the background. And I start by using the Layers palette over here. And I'm going to go down to here, and Adjustment Layers, and I'm going to choose the first one, Solid Color. Now this is the only way to get one of these Solid Color Adjustment Layers, is using the menu in the, the drop-down menu here in the Layers palette. Okay, Solid Color is going to give you a dialog box that looks like this, where you can choose your color, or get started by clicking on a swath up here and then adjusting it down here. I'm going to say OK. And now notice that the solid color adjustment, the solid color adjustment layer right here, has completely replaced Elizabeth Taylor. You can't see the pixels at all in this layer because these pixels are completely replacing them. However, that's why we have the blend menu up here. Now, in certain instances where you're uh, colorizing something that doesn't have a lot of grayscale values in it, you might use a linear burn, as we did in an earlier exercise. That's good for applying color to white areas or black areas. However, in tinting a photograph, the grayscale takes color pretty well, so we don't have to do that. We'll go down to either the overlay, and we'll check and see how that looks. Sometimes overlay adds a bit too much brightness. And we can also use color down here at the bottom of the and you see color, I think, is taking the, the image is taking the color a lot better than the overlay mode. You decide. Uh, base it on what you're seeing. Now, I've got a color for her that I like. Uh, how do I get rid of the color in the areas where I don't want it? I just want the color on her face and not on the flower, not on the hair, not on the background. Uh, so I'm going to go in and notice that each solid color adjustment layer comes with its own mask. I'm going to go into the mask itself and do some painting there to get rid of the color wherever I don't want it. And of course, like with any mask, I'm going to be painting with black. Let's choose the paintbrush. Let's choose black and white as our mode. Let's choose the color mask itself. Make sure the mask itself is selected before you begin painting. If you paint on the pixels of this adjustment layer, you'll convert it from an adjustment layer into a solid color layer. And that's not so good because it's very difficult to change color at that point. Uh, it's Here I can change color wherever I want just by clicking on this and choosing a new color. Uh, very, very simple to do, very easy, and uh, can be done over and over again. All right, so I'm choosing the mask. I'm grabbing my paintbrush, I'm making sure I'm painting with black, and I use a somewhat large brush just because I have a lot of uh, color to get rid of. Now here I am painting, uh, getting rid of those edges, and of course as I get closer to the edge of her neck I'm going to have to use a tighter brush. Let me get uh, more of the hair here. Even though you can barely see colors in some of these areas, they can be perceived, so be very careful at, uh, at getting rid of the color everywhere you don't want it. Now, of course, I've taken out some color here because uh, using such a large brush. So I'll go back with a smaller brush and fill in the color using white 
and I'll just outline the edges of her face here. Uh, I'm clicking and holding down the shift key while I do, which allows me to draw from one area to another. I go to the X to go back to black and paint out some of this additional skin color that's spilling over. Like that. And like that. Now back to white to add the skin color back in. Where I've inadvertently made it go away. And back to black. Get rid of those edges where I just made it on the flower. And let's go over to the other side now. And again, painting with white to bring back some color here. And I'm working along the edge here to get it perfectly situated. Okay, we make sure that there's uh, no color wherever else we see it happening and don't want it. And this is where we take the opportunity to really blank out any color at all on the white of the eyeballs. We'll be filling in the pupils with an additional color in just a moment. But for right now, I'm getting rid of the color where it shouldn't be on the whites of the eyeball. Uh, if I do a little too much, I'll go back with white to paint that in. All right, that's looking pretty good now. Uh, I'm also going to eliminate the color in the lips, uh, painting with black because I know I'm going to be filling that in with another color and I don't know how that will combine with the skin color so I'm going to just make sure there's no color at all there when I make my next layer. Uh, trim it up a little bit so it doesn't spill over into the skin itself. Here and there, here and there. Alright, now let's uh, add a new uh, adjustment layer. We go over here to the Layers palette again, you can see the mask now roughly approximating Elizabeth's face. Um, I'm now going to grab a new color adjustment layer right here, solid color. And this is going to be used for the lips, so I'll get a nice red color there. And then we'll have to blend this color with the backgrounds underneath it. So I go from normal down to color, which is what I've chosen for this particular image. And of course it gives us this. Now Elizabeth's very, very, very red now overall, and we don't want that to happen. So what I would do is paint black into the mask here until I got rid of all the red, but that would be painting almost the entire image. It seems easier just to fill the mask with black first. So I'll grab the mask and fill it, edit, fill, with the black option and now the mask is completely full of black and all I have to do to bring out the lips is to punch a hole in that black basically using a white brush so let's uh, brush and we're already using white so I'm going to paint on the mask layer now and bring in the color underneath there we go Looking pretty good. And if I make a mistake or paint too much, I'll just go back and uh, take it back out again using the black. Maybe a little bit misapplied here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, uh, check out the, uh, the overall density of the colors. And you'll see that the red is a little bit too red to be realistic in a photograph. The skin's a little bit too much there. So let's take some uh, color out of the color by going over here to the Color Fill menu and looking at its opacity. We're going to change the opacity for both this and this layer to knock it back a little bit and make the color a little bit more realistic. First, I'll work on the Lips layer right here in Opacity and I'll knock it back like that. We could take it all the way back to nothing here using the opacity or bring it back up until we have a nice realistic lip color, not too pronounced. Now I'm going to go to the skin layer 
And again, playing with the opacity, I'm looking for a more realistic skin color, something that you would actually see in a color photograph, which is not too uh, extreme. All right, now let's do those beautiful velvet eyes. Uh, here's a uh, solid color layer. I'm going to choose a purple, uh, something like that, some clearly violet. And you see the lip showing up underneath. That's because the new adjustment layer I've created is sitting underneath the lips. So let's move it all the way to the top. Not that it's going to make a great deal of difference here. And then set it to blend with the color filter. There we go. And again, this is a case where I just want the eyeballs to be purple. So I'm going to fill this mask with black to start things off. Fill black. Okay. Now painting with white on the mask itself and not on the solid color. I will now paint in the velvet of the eyes. Very nice, huh? And again, if that seems too unrealistic, I could knock back that velvet color by uh, grabbing the opacity and knocking it back a little bit. At this point, we're still going to do the flower. Uh, there's actually a bit of green leaf here. Uh, there's a some sort of necklace, or, or not necklace, but uh, earring here that we could go with some goldish color or silver. Uh, though if we're sticking with silver, you might not want to put any color on it at all. And then we can do the overall, the uh, background color as well, and that will come out very nice. But basically, this is what you're using. Solid color adjustment layers, modified with a mask, and set to blend with what's underneath. Remember, a new color for, a new layer for each color.